Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now, I've always been looking at improving soils. Now, as you can see behind me, you know, a lot of this stuff here at Fat Cow Farm, it's all pasture land. And we've got typically about 100 to 150 mil of topsoil, and then we've got like a clay bed underneath. Now, you know, so typically what I'm looking at is improving soil quality. Um, and always looking for little bits and pieces to help out along the way. We've had a massive wet over the last couple of years and typically history will tell me that after a big wet we're going to get a big dry. So I am waiting for that dry and I need to start thinking about how I'm going to retain moisture in our soils. Now we've got swales, contour swales running through the property. You know we've got a lot of things going on to help you know once a cow like once our herd have been moved from a paddock they've cut it down I go in with the flail mower and just mulch and take it back to a, an even level so at the around about 75 mil so that that turns into that optimum grass growing height and then it starts again but like I said I'm always chasing down new concepts about how to improve soil now during the week, I was sent a documentary video from the Food Revolution Network, and that one, that video or that documentary was titled The Need to Grow. Now, I don't normally come around and, and spruik things that I've seen on the internet or whatever it may be, but this particular video really opened my eyes, and they are talking about a product called biochar. Now, I'd never heard of biochar, and to break it down, what it is, is a um, like a charcoal that's inoculated or charged with nutrients and bacteria and everything else. And then it's crushed and, and done all the things that need to happen. So it turns into like a powder form. And then we can almost broadcast that into the pastures. We can use that on the vegetable patches. We can use that into the hoop house or whatever it may be. And the crux of what biochar is, is that it's... A, a, a product that absorbs moisture and bacteria and things like that. And so if you do go through those periods of dry, the plants then have a redundant source of moisture where they can get life and things and, and continue on growing. Now, to me, that sounded like a pretty, no, that was a, a no-brainer, an absolute no-brainer. So. So here I am today going through the process of really thinking about how I'm going to make biochar on the property. Now, to start off with, what biochar really is, is um, burnt um, timber material. Okay, so this is just charcoal from last night's fire. Now, this hasn't turned to powder or potash or anything like that. So this is purely just raw carbon. Um, and if I was to look at this under a microscope, this is like a honeycomb web. It's full of holes and, and everything else. Now, this is the main basis of what biochar is. Now, with all those little holes and everything else in the, in the charcoal, you need to either take the charcoal and put it into a compost heap and let all the bacteria and everything else penetrate these little spores because it's almost like a home for them and it will also then absorb moisture and things like that so when it's put into the ground or mixed up with your garden soils that becomes your redundant part of the moisture content now i don't have like we, we have our process of making soils here um, and we use all our byproducts and compost and things like that, and then we, we then add in like comfrey and, and things like that, comfrey leaves. So anyway, my thought process being is that if I was to put this into a compost heap, it's gonna have to sit for around about four to six months. Now, I, I'm sort of in that experimental phase when I need to sort of charge that charcoal a lot quicker. And so I started looking on the internet and funnily enough, my favorite little plant, which is comfrey, became the number one way to inoculate or charge up that carbon to turn it into biochar. Now, this little guy here, I mean, like I said, we use this for all our um, 
compost or composting and making soils here at Fat Cow Farm. So we would only add in, you know, maybe eight or nine different leaves in our layered composting system. But this little guy's got all the good gear in it. So it's got the nitrogen, it's got the potassium, it's got the phosphorus, everything that you need to have for all the nutrients for the plants to grow. And so if we made a tea, hence why I've got a big barrel here today, because I want to start and do an experiment on this biochar. So I'm going to have to make up a tea first. Now, this particular tea does take a bit of time. It's around about three to four weeks. So before I start collecting all my charcoal, I need to make up a tea first. So what I've got here is all my comfrey leaves. Now, what I've done this, this morning is just quickly ran around and just picked off some bits and pieces and I've just filled up a wheelbarrow. I mean, we've been planting this for about two years now. We've got it under all our fruit trees and things like that. So we've got plenty of it. Now, if this really works, which I, in theory it does, but in practice is sometimes a different sort of matter. So what I wanna do is actually try this. And then what we're gonna do is then just do an experiment in the hoop house just to see how this works before I take it to another level and then start looking at pastures here at Fat Cow Farm. And obviously that's going to be a big, a big effort, but something that can be constantly made up. We constantly, when we can make teas, we've always got charcoal and I can, and you know, there's a lot of different ways on, on how to make your charcoal. So look, that's something for everyone else to go off and do their own research. But I'm thinking that this is the start of how this is going to happen here at Fat Cow Farm. So what I want to do is transfer these leaves here, all my comfrey leaves, into the barrel. I'm going to get that quickly sorted out now. I'll then come back and find you and then we'll charge this up full of water and I'll explain a little bit more about it. So for those who brew their own beer and things like that at home, it's going to start fermenting and apparently it stinks. So we're going to leave this outside, obviously. We're not going to take it anywhere we're enclosed. But look, I'll get a few things sorted out. I'll come and find you and I'll see you soon. All right, so as you can see, what I've done is just roughly broken those up with my hands. I haven't done anything major. All, all I'm thinking about here is just sort of increasing the surface area when I put the water on top. Now, I suppose if you wanted to run it through a mulcher or something like that, you know, that could work just as quickly, probably even faster to get a lot of those juices and everything out, all the, the nutrients and, and whatnot out of the leaves. But I, I can't tell you about measurements and I, 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 that I don't know. All I know uh -huh. is that this is purely just an experiment. Moa. This is purely just an experiment for us to see what actually happens. My, I'm figuring that what we'll end up doing is we'll fill this top with water. And if, if the, um, the process being is that this should start fermenting, so like a beer. And so the lid's gonna have to be sitting loose or have an air gap under it. And as this slowly turns over, from my understanding, it should turn like a really dark green, almost like a black. And at that point there, that is then ready as a comfrey tea, so to speak, which I'll then, um, I'll start now organizing my own um, charcoal. And then so that this can then sit and absorb into that charcoal. So as an example, let's say if I was to use, I don't know, I'll just make it easy, let's say a 20 litre drum and pour that over this tea over the, the charcoal. The charcoal would absorb a lot of that and maybe, you know, it could almost absorb it up to half. So you're only left with a 10% volume of, of fluid. Then add in some soil from the chicken coop or your compost or whatever it may be. Add in a little bit more, um, maybe cow poo or something of the sort to really give it that vigor of all the bacteria and nutrients and everything else that you need, and then mix it up into your garden beds. Well, really, at the end of the day, 
you're making it at the farm or at the house or whatever it may be, it just seems to be like an all win. Now also too, what, they, what you can do is that with the fluid left over or the fluids, I'm gonna take some off and I'm, I'm maybe only gonna do maybe five liters or something of the sort and have that as a concentrate because what they're also saying is that that's like a, a substitute for your, uh, let's say sea salt or liquid fertilizers that you may use around the house or the home or whatever it may be. And especially for those um, like tomatoes and, and things like that where you've got a high fluid content. I don't know, you know, it's one of those sort of scenarios that people use it, people don't. Um, I'll give it a crack, we'll set up a couple of tomatoes come spring or whatever it may be maybe the capsicums are ready to rock and roll. I'll pour uh, maybe a 10% dilution, 10% um, of the comfrey tea into a watering can or whatever it may be, and then just see what happens. And I'll tell you what, if they start growing super fast, <laughs> just, I have found the trick, absolutely found the trick. So at this point here though, you know, what am I? I'm about a third. I'm gonna fill this up with water now. I would expect that if you could get yourself rainwater, it would be a better sort of solution rather than having mains where you've got a lot of chlorine and things coming through. So luckily enough, we're on tank water here. So I'm gonna fill this up with rainwater and up to the top. And I'm just gonna see what happens. But what we're gonna do is we'll document everything as we go through. And so that you know you, we can build this all as, as one. Um, when we start inoculating our our charcoal to make this biochar. So I wish I'm pretty, you know, well, you know, I've never, like I said, I've never heard about it and I'm pretty keen to see what actually is going to happen. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna fill this up with water now. I'm gonna put a, just a, a flower pot, a, a bucket with a rock in there. I'll put that in top just to sort of keep those leaves down a bit. And look, I imagine every couple of days, give it a bit of a shake, you know, stir it up a bit. And um, and yeah, look, I can't give you a time about how this is, how long this is gonna take. I'll, I'll document that as we go through. But until it reaches that, you know, like I said, dark green to black sort of fluid content, I would think that that's ready to rock and roll. Now, you know, that could take three weeks, it could take two weeks, it could take four weeks, I really don't know. It, look, it could also be depending on how much comfrey we have in here. So, <laughs> once we work it out and crack it, then, you know, this is up for everyone to sort of use. But I'm pretty pumped about this. Like I said, we've got this growing everywhere. And, you know, charcoal is a byproduct. You know, we're always pruning trees and things like that. So, we'll go into that a little bit later about how to how to make that the, um, the charcoal. We'll add the two together to make biochar and let's see how the vegetables go. If it works at the veggie garden, it's certainly going to work out there. I don't know how I'm going to spread it yet though. Maybe I'll have to put a trench in and then put biochar in or something like that every couple hundred meters. And as time progresses, those channels get smaller and smaller. But who's to say? I don't know. <laughs> we'll just have to see how it all pans out. All right, so here we are. Now, I've filled up our um, our olive barrel and it's only oh, maybe about a third. Now, what, what happened is that the all the leaf matter rose with the, the, the water. So we, we are gonna need this bucket with, I've just got a couple of rocks in here. And I'll sort of just keep that down like so. Now I've been thinking about the smell. Um, people were saying, you know, this is gonna stink and everything else. But I think really at the end of the day, all it's going to be is just the breaking down of the leaves and that the gas that comes off that, hence that, that whole fermenting process. So what I would sort of, um, what I'll do is that I'll just, I'll keep the lid like that. I'll find something just to sit under it like so. Um, just to keep a lot of the, because I don't want to have, I want to sort of manage how much water we've got going in here rather than having rain constantly come in over the top and things like that. So that we can actually start looking at that concentrate. So yeah, I, I mean, you know, something like that was where it will be. I'm going to put this under cover. Um, 
around the corner of the shed so it, when it starts breaking down um, and then I can manage it from there. But look, like I said before, you've got two things here. You've got your comfrey tea as a fertilizer, maybe as a substitute for your sea sole or, or whatever it may be. And this is maybe something that you can do it on a way smaller scale, you know, around the house. Um, I want to upscale this. And, and if this tends to work, then, you know, like, wow. I just, it, it would, it's really going to be a bit of a game changer for us but in particular, especially with that dry that I know that it will be coming. So, um, yeah, look, you know, step one in making our biochar, making your comfrey tea, you know, I'm pretty pumped up about this. This could be, this could be the start of something new here at Fat Cow Farm. So, like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.